Cooking the perfect steak requires that you time things just right. Stop that cooking too soon and the steak's underdone. But too late is arguably worse and your steak's dry and overcooked. And as your steak gets thicker, timing things just right becomes even more challenging. There's a better way to cooking the perfect steak by dividing and conquering the problem with one step for your ideal doneness and a second step for a great sear. The two most popular techniques for doing this are the sous vide and sear and the reverse sear. But is one of these techniques inherently better than another? Does one give you a juicier steak with a better, more delicious crust than the other? Today, I'm gonna to cook these two inch thick porterhouse steaks with the sous vide and sear and reverse sear to find out which cooks the best steak. Proponents of the sous vide cooking technique tend to talk about the simplicity of its set it and forget it controls. The fact that it's almost impossible to overcook your food by leaving it in the water bath for too long. But above all, it's that uniformity of perfect edge to edge doneness that really sets sous vide apart as a cooking technique. Some people even claim that sous vide seals in the juices, resulting in a juicier steak. Although on this last claim, I'm a bit skeptical and we're gonna test it today by weighing both steaks before cooking and after cooking to see if somehow sous vide does seal in more juiciness. Advocates for reverse searing will mention that it doesn't require you to package your food, that it tends to be faster than sous vide cooking, but above all, that it does what its name says and gives you the best possible sear on your steak. And that's because it's able to dry out the surface while your steak cooks in the oven. But is this true? Does reverse searing really give you a better crust than sous vide and sear? It's not immediately obvious why this would be true. I mean, if you put either steak onto a ripping hot grill or into a really hot pan, any water at the surface should flash to steam almost instantly, and you should be able to get an equally good crust on either technique. So let's see if that's true. Fundamentally, both of these techniques are about dividing and conquering the perfect steak, with a first step for your ideal doneness and a second step for a great crust. So let's find out how each of these techniques does in terms of temperature control and uniformity of cooking, speed, juiciness, and that delicious crust. The first step to a divide and conquer approach to cooking your perfect steak is heating your steak to your ideal doneness. Devices like this dual sous vide circulator can maintain the temperature of a water bath to a tenth of a degree Celsius in accuracy. No other appliance in your kitchen brings that level of precision. And because the food's sealed in packaging, there's no evaporation occurring that would change the cooking temperature of the food. The food is cooking at the temperature of the surrounding water. As a result, it all but guarantees your ideal doneness. Moreover, because the food can't get any hotter than the surrounding water, leaving it for tens of minutes, even hours too long, isn't gonna overcook it. It will have a negligible impact on quality. Conversely, when we bake a steak in an oven as the first step of a reverse sear, the surface of our steak is drying out. There is evaporation occurring and that changes the cooking temperature of the steak to something other than what you've set the oven to. Unless you're measuring and controlling the temperature at the surface, your steak is constantly changing its cooking temperature and as a result, you do need to time things just right. Leave it too long and it will eventually overcook. And you are going to get more of a gradient of doneness from edge to edge than you would with sous vide. So in terms of guaranteeing your ideal doneness, sous vide is the clear winner. That guarantee of your ideal doneness for sous vide does come at a cost, however. Sous vide tends to be slow. That's because we're cooking at the temperature we want our steak to reach. And as our steak reaches the temperature of the water bath, the rate of heating really slows down. With reverse sear, we're cooking at a significantly higher temperature than our ideal doneness, so the rate of heating is quite a bit faster and the steak is done sooner. The trade-off, of course, is that you do have to time things just right or you're gonna end up overcooking your steak. But speed, or the lack thereof, isn't inherent in the technique of sous vide or reverse sear for that matter. With sous vide, we're cooking at the temperature of our ideal doneness. And as our steak approaches the temperature of the water bath, the rate of heating really slows down. In fact, those last few degrees take up to a third of the total cooking time. 
if we were to raise the temperature of our sous vide water bath by two to three degrees Celsius, we'd cut the total cooking time by 20 to 25%. Of course, that comes at a risk that if we leave the steak in too long, it will overcook slightly. In the case of the reverse sear, we're generally cooking at a higher temperature than our ideal done disc, and that's why there's the risk of overcooking if we leave it in too long. If we were to control the temperature at the surface of our steak to hold it at the same temperature of a sous vide water bath, our steak couldn't get any hotter than its surface, and it would be just as evenly done as sous vide, and it would take just as long as sous vide. Now, this all has to do with evaporative cooling and what the real temperature is in your oven. If you're confused by this, I have another video about why your oven is a liar, and I'll put a link to it right here. Before we talk about which technique gives you the juiciest steak with the best possible sear, I'd like to make a short pitch for the products that I'm making with my team at Combustion Inc. This is our wireless predictive thermometer and its kitchen timer that works as a display. It has eight temperature sensors to measure the temperature at the center of your food and outside your food. But important to this video, it also measures the temperature at the surface of your food as it cooks. And this can be useful. It allows you to bring the precision of sous vide-like cooking to techniques like the reverse sear or in your smoker. Simply adjust the temperature of your oven up or down until the surface is at the temperature you want it to cook. And that way there's no risk of overcooking and you can be certain at what temperature the food is really cooking. Now I'll be giving away five of these thermometers and their displays each week in the month of July and I'll put details of how to text to win in the description below. But for now, Let's get back to our video. Some people claim that cooking sous vide seals in the juices. So we weighed both the sous vide steak and the reverse seared steak both before and after cooking to calculate out just how much juice was lost during the cooking process. The sous vide steak lost about 6.1% of its weight in juices, whereas the reverse seared steak lost about 9.7%. That's a 3.6% difference in juiciness between the two steaks. And that's such a small difference, it's not one that I really think you're gonna pick up on, but I'm gonna try both steaks side by side blind later in this video to see if one technique inherently leads to a juicier steak than the other. But looking at the reverse seared steak versus the sous vide steak, there's a really big difference in the surfaces. The reverse seared steak has a dry, leathery proto crust already, even before searing. Whereas the sous vide steak is wet and looks pretty unappetizing. But the only way to really know is try it side by side. So we've seared both steaks, and to my eye, the reverse seared steak, the crust looks a little bit better. It's got a slightly richer mahogany color. It's a little crisper looking, but to be honest, the sous vide steak seared pretty well too in the same amount of time. So we're gonna carve into these, and I'm gonna taste test. This is our sous vide steak. And this is the reverse seared steak. If I were to be looking at these blind without knowing which were which, I couldn't tell them apart. The amount of overcooking beneath the crust is about the same for both. The edge to edge uniformity of doneness looks about the same. So the only possible difference left is really, does one taste better than the other? And to answer that, I'm gonna do a taste test to see if I can tell which is which. To figure out whether one technique creates a more flavorful, delicious steak than the other is the job of a taste test. Now, a side-by-side -side test isn't the best way to do this. There's too many biases based on the order you try the slices of steak in. 
The correct way to do it is with what's known as a triangle test, where two slices are the same and one is different. And my job is to taste these and figure out which one is the odd man out. That allows me to see if I can really pick up on a difference or if I'm just fooling myself. To help me do this, I have Josh. This is a Josh. Josh's day job is an industrial designer at Combustion Inc., but today he'll be administering a sensory science test. Let's try these. So Josh is gonna create two piles of either the sous vide or the reverse seared steak, and one pile of the opposite steak. And I'm gonna wear this blindfold and taste each of these and see if I can guess which one is the odd steak out. So Josh, go ahead and set them up. First one. Tasty, okay. Two and three are the same. Nope, I actually had sous vide, reverse sear, sous vide. So, so first and last were the same. They're all delicious. They taste really, really similar. Um, I can't pick up an obvious difference. And when tasting them blind with the triangle test, I can't pick it up either. So I would have to say there's really no difference between either technique in terms of flavor. And as we see, the appearance and the crust is very, very similar. So really, why should you choose one technique over the other? Let's talk about that. So why favor one technique over the other? Why choose sous vide and sear over the reverse sear? And the answer to that, I think, really depends on what your needs are. For sous vide, if I'm in a restaurant setting or I have a party where I have a lot of steaks to cook, the temperature control, the reliability, the lack of risk of overcooking the steaks, that really lends itself to sous vide. On the other hand, everybody has an oven and that's where the reverse here really shines. If I only have maybe a large festive roast to cook, I can pay attention to the temperature and all I have to do is sear it when I'm ready and I get the same result. So there's no clear winner to one technique over the other. Both are capable of cooking an absolutely delicious steak. It really depends on what your needs are. If you enjoyed this video, if you found my explanations helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you click the like button below and hit subscribe. And please feel free to leave me a comment about what other kinds of videos you'd like to see in the future. Thank you so much for watching.